Hello, my name is Van from Catfish and the Bottle Men. Hello, I'm Bondi from Catfish and the Bottle Men. We're in Amoeba Record Store in Hollywood, and this is what's in my bag. So, Bondi got me into Father John Misty, this dude, because you'd just be playing him on repeat in the dressing rooms all the time. That Hollywood Forever Cemetery song, which is on this one. I always remember that, just ringing around the dressing rooms before we go on stage. And then we just played the Hollywood Forever Cemetery, the Masonic Lodge, like a little intimate show, so we're there. And then I started realising, we should let this dead guy sleep. We should let this dead guy sleep. I like Father John Misty's music when Bondi started playing it because it reminded me he could write a song and make it so funny yet so heartfelt at the same time. The first one I picked is Dots and Loops by Stereolab. This is probably my favourite of theirs, but the first I got was Emperor Tomato Ketchup. <laughs> it sounds cool, nonsensical, <laughs> but like, they're absolutely just a fantastic band. It's got that really like French soundtracky sound to it, but it's really rhythmic as well. Eel's Royal Albert Hall one, because it's got near enough everything on it, he's great live. Just like, again, for me, lyrics and just heart on sleeve, like, it's a motherfucker, that tune. <laughs> it's a motherfucker being here without you. Think about the good times, think about the bad, and I won't ever be the same. Soundtrack to Taxi Driver. I would actually just sit and listen to that around the house, I love it so much. This De Niro like driving around New York in the 70s and yeah. seeing like the pimps and prostitutes on the street and things like that and yeah, just this proper like Again, suspicious sounding trumpet <laughs> creeping over the top. I've got a Doors record, I've got the LA Woman record because we were on top of the Capitol building the other day and right at the top of the building you can look down and see these like four brown bungalows and he said that's where the actresses and models used to all come and stay when they used to come to LA. Jim was dating a girl there, I used to go and see them. And in that, that line, hang out with the girls in the Hollywood bungalows or whatever he says, and then he pointed LA out. Women. Yeah, and he's like, so that's where the LA women were, and that, they're the bungalows. So there's a song on it before that called Cars Hiss By My Window. And he does this kind of mouth organ vocal guitar solo. I'm pretty sure he's just singing a guitar solo into a, you know, like a bullet microphone. Green bullet microphone. So I really like that tune as well. John claude Vanier. I'm a huge Serge Gainsbourg fan and he's the man behind all those beautiful orchestrations that you hear. He's a string writer and this is his solo piece. I'm just reissued by Finders Keepers. I don't know this album all that well, but I know what a big part he played in making some of my favourite Serge stuff. I think it's a track called Les Enfants de Mouche or something. It's a little track lessons on the back, so I never know, but I'm pretty sure <laughs> it's, it's sort of like a mad, like, psychedelic clip of a uh, YSL fashion show in the 60s and it was Jean-Claude Vanier's music soundtrack and it was just the most like surreal thing for a fashion show. It just looks manic. It looks um, like Lennon looking for Yoko, you know, like <laughs> for the front of his album. <laughs> I'm gonna go for this Van Morrison album, Moondance. My favourite's like Tupelo Honey or St. Dominic's Preview, I think, but this one's got Caravan on it. Have you seen The Last Waltz, the film about the band where it gets all the people they played with kind of up? Van Morrison plays that, and it's probably my favourite live performance of anything ever because of his voice in it. The story I've been told was he's, he went away because he got stage fright for years. He didn't like the pop scene and he didn't like the fact that he'd signed to this corporate industry and he was quite like a integral soul songwriter, so to speak, so couldn't even go on stage because he had nerves about it and stuff like that. And that was his first performance back after that. 
to the one more time. And Into the Mystics on it, which is the best love song I think I've ever heard. Apart from the one you wrote for me. Anymore where they came from. But that's not on vinyl yet, <laughs> is it? My dad, because my middle name was Evan McCann, like his was Ivan Morrison, so, and he always called me Van after that. And uh, my mum was like, you can't call him Van McCann, it sounds like Humpty Dumpty, you know what I mean? But he always, <laughs> <laughs> he always did. I've chose Les Baxter's African Jazz. I heard a song called The Left Arm of Buddha originally, and that song was kind of unlike anything else of his that I've heard. It's sort of got like a really weird string loop and a drum groove with like drowned in tape echo, and it sounded kind of quite ahead of its time. But there's a song called Mombasa after midnight on this, which I play a lot in the dressing room. It's just a really like like relaxing song, like a really like smooth, squawky jazz number. I'm gonna go with the third Strokes album because this one, from what I remember, was the one that people were like, oh, they've lost it kind of thing. They've lost the Strokes kind of vibe, you know, like the critics and that were saying about it. But this is by far my you favorite. Only one, son. It's got YOLO on it. Juice box on it. <laughs> My favourite stroke song, Eyes of the World, where like every kind of line in the chorus ends with eyes, like a city to vaporise and a body to deodorise and all that kind of stuff. I always wanted to sound like that kind of band. Like the third album, Strokes, was always my favourite kind of sounding band. It was garagey, but it was well produced. So uh, it sounded lo fi, yet if you turned it up in an arena, it sounds huge. So that was a big help with songwriting. So thanks for that, lads. <laughs> Cheers, lads. Cheers, boys. I chose a live Roxy album. They were always a band that was played around the house when I was growing up. Like, my dad was totally into his punk stuff. My mum was into Northern Soul and Motown, but the one, the two things they agreed on were Bowie and Roxy. I can talk, 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 talk I got to see them live in about 2010 or something, and it's still absolutely incredible. I was looking for a guy called Benji Hughes because he's one of my favourite songwriters, but <laughs> not many shops have his stuff. But whilst looking for that, I found Catfish Hodge Band. <laughs> the album's called Eyewitness Blues. Look at that. Who's that? It's like I made it. Look at him. I have no idea. Looks like me at all. It's great. The only thing I know, the blues got the world by the ball. I've got this national record, Trouble Will Find Me. As soon as I heard it, I did not stop playing it from start to finish. I'm like a genuine fanatic of the national. His lyrics are, again, putting back in that bracket with the other boys. went for Todd Rundgren record. First heard Nas through Nuggets. And then realised Todd Rundgren came out of that and went on to be pretty fantastic. I don't know a great deal of this record, but I heard a track called Cold Morning Light and loved it because it sounds, it sounds like it could be a Carpenter's record or something. <laughs> I love him, and he's a fantastic guitar player too, so. This is the only streets they had in here, but Mike Skinner, the streets, he's my favorite of all time. He's the one I got myself into. And in general, are the reason I started liking lyrics. I just loved the way he could write a song about smoking with his girlfriend and watching the TV. It's a song called Wouldn't Have It Any Other Way, which is that kind of story I'm talking about. I would actually much prefer to just sit here and chill, roaching a spliff, watching EastEnders or the bill. My last pick is Parable of Arable by the Red Crayola. As far as I know, they were acid buddies with the 13th floor elevators, and I first heard about them through Spaceman 3, covering a song called Transparent Radiation off this absolutely frantic psychedelia, but it's a, it's a brilliant record. And I love that track, Transparent Radiation. It's just balmy lyrics. <laughs> Thank you.
There you go. There you go. Thank you. Awesome. Thanks a lot, guys. Yeah, no. It's all good. Thank you for having us.